Hi, my name is Chevy and I'm one of the prenatal genetic counselors here at Catholic Health. Today I'm going to give you a little more information about prenatal genetic counseling and genetic testing. There are many reasons why somebody might be sent to see a prenatal genetic counselor or might want to go to see a gen prenatal genetic counselor during pregnancy or before conceiving. If there is a genetic disease in your family or a history of intellectual disability or birth defects or any other medical concerns, then you might want to talk to a genetic counselor about the risks for your pregnancy. Additionally, if you have a history of infertility or two or more pregnancy losses, there might be a genetic or chromosomal cause to that that we could help you test for. Medication exposures during pregnancy, as well as any abnormal prenatal screening or ultrasound results, might result in you being sent to a genetic counselor to talk more about what these risks might entail for your baby. We're all made up of millions of cells. In each of our cells, we are supposed to have 46 chromosomes that are made up of DNA. Little sections of DNA are called genes, and every gene gives the body instructions on how to perform a specific function. Our genes determine what we look like, and they also give instructions to our bodies on how to function on a daily basis. Like I said, we are supposed to have 46 chromosomes. That's 23 pairs of two, where you get one in each pair from your mom and one in each pair from your dad. Occasionally, a pregnancy might have an extra or a missing chromosome. Most of the time, this results in an early pregnancy loss, but we know that when that extra or missing chromosome is one of a few specific chromosomes, that can result in a full-term pregnancy and a live-born child. This includes chromosomes 13, 18, 21, and X and Y. An extra chromosome 21, or trisomy 21, is more well known as Down syndrome, Trisomy 13 and 18 are other chromosomal aneuploidies that are a little less common than Down syndrome, and it is also possible to have extra or missing of the sex chromosomes, which are the X and Y chromosomes. The extra chromosome results from something called non-disjunction, which is when, usually in the egg rather than the sperm, when it, their chromosomes stick together, and instead of having only one copy of the chromosome in the egg, the egg has, has two copies of the chromosome. The child then receives two chromosomes from mom, one from dad, and there are three. It's also possible for this to happen from the dad, but in many cases it does result from the mom's egg. Specifically, as women get older, we have a risk to have a we, our risk gets higher, I should say, to have a child with an aneuploidy or an extra or missing chromosome. It is important to keep in mind that this can happen in any pregnancy, in any woman, at any age. Additionally, many women who are over the ages of 35 and 40 do have healthy pregnancy. We just have a higher level of concern as women get older that their pregnancy might be affected with Down syndrome or a chromosomal aneuploidy. Because every single pregnancy has these risks, there are a lot of different testing and screening that we do during pregnancy. Some of these include maternal serum screening, which are blood tests looking at the values of different hormones and proteins within a mother's blood. We do ultrasounds throughout the pregnancy. Non-invasive prenatal screening or cell-free fetal DNA analysis can be done at any point in the pregnancy. And then there's also the option of diagnostic testing, which is an invasive test getting a direct look at the baby's DNA, which can be done either via a chorionic villus sampling or an amniocentesis. Non-invasive prenatal testing or screening is a prenatal screening test that has been around for over the past 10 years and has become a lot more popular over the past few years. It is now being done in women at any age who are pregnant as opposed to only women over 35 as it has been done in the past. This test is a blood test. It looks in mom's blood at the free DNA that is floating in her blood. We all have DNA that's floating in our bloodstream. This is normal. But when we're pregnant, there's also DNA from the placenta in our bloodstream. The placenta is made up of a combination of cells from the mom and the baby, and so the, so the placenta has some of the baby's DNA and chromosomal makeup, and therefore that free DNA in mom's blood can also represent the baby's DNA. It is important to keep in mind with this test that while it does give us the risk of Down syndrome and the other chromosomal aneuploidies, as well as some other uh, chromosomal conditions called deletion and duplication syndromes, it also is not a diagnostic test, meaning it can be wrong. False positives are not unheard of with this test, and a positive result on this test does not mean that your baby 
has the disease in question. It just means a higher risk and we want to learn more. Maternal serum screening is a blood test that looks at hormones and proteins within a mom's blood. With this test, it, it is another way to evaluate for risk of Down syndrome and aneuploidies. The risk is not as exact as with non-invasive prenatal screening and testing, and so this test is not always done. But the one part of it that we do continuously do is called AFP, or alpha beta protein, because this test looks for specific types of congenital anomalies, including spina bifida, that result from an opening in the body wall. These, or these congenital anomalies are often not genetic and can occur in any pregnancy. Diagnostic testing includes amniocentesis and chorionic villa sampling. The CVS, or chorionic villa sampling, is done earlier in the pregnancy, in, at the end of the first trimester, usually from around 10 to 13 weeks. The amniocentesis can be done at 16 weeks and on. With these tests, then, they are invasive, meaning there is a needle or a catheter getting, obtaining some DNA from the baby. In the case of the amniocentesis, you are removing a little bit of amniotic fluid with a chorionic villi sampling. You are removing a little bit of the chorionic villi, which are the developing placental cells. With the, by testing either the, amnio, the amniocytes or the cells from the CVS, again, we are able to get information about the baby's DNA. However, unlike the previous test that I mentioned, these are diagnostic. And so if there is a result of Down syndrome or a chromosomal or genetic disease on either of these tests, we do consider that to be a diagnosis for the baby. If these are negative, then we can say pretty confidently that the baby does not have any of the diseases that we tested for. Additionally, in genetic counseling, we also talk about some, some genetic diseases. Many of them are recessive diseases, which means that the parents might be carriers or unaffected individuals who have a gene not working right and therefore have a potential to have a child with the condition in question. Pregnant women are often tested for, for different recessive diseases. The most common ones that people are tested for would include cystic fibrosis, spinal muscular atrophy, sickle cell disease, and the other hemoglobinopathies as well. With recessive diseases, like I said, the parents are unaffected, they do not have any symptoms, but if both the mom and the dad are carriers of the same genetic disease, there's a 25% risk for the baby to have that disease. Many people do not know that they are carriers, and so therefore we generally test people for a whole list of diseases, not because we're concerned that they have these diseases, but because we have no way of knowing without doing this test. Some, you can test for as little as two or three diseases, and there are also recessive carrier screening tests for recessive diseases that go up to 500. Additionally, uh, there is, we also test for some X-linked conditions. X-linked conditions differ from recessive conditions because these are specifically carried only by the mother. Women typically have two X chromosomes, and males have an X and a Y. Therefore, if a woman has a gene on the X chromosome not functioning correctly, she, has it, she may not have any symptoms or may have minimal symptoms, but if she passes on that gene to her son, he may have a more severe version of the disease. Genetic counseling. In genetic counseling, we guide and support patients who are interested in understanding how inherited diseases may affect them or their family members' health. We go through a comprehensive review of your own medical history as well as your family history and create a family tree. We want to see if there's anything going on that you may not think could represent a problem that might actually represent a risk for you or for your child. We give information regarding genetics. We go through how different diseases pass through families and using that information, what the risks might be for you and your baby. We give information about genetic testing, including the benefits, limitations, and legal implications. We want to make sure that any genetic tests that you do, you understand exactly what you are getting into and what the possible results might be. We also can arrange that genetic testing and give you your genetic test results with a full explanation of what these results mean for you. When we do genetic testing, it's important to keep in mind that there are some limitations and risks. A negative, 
even if you have a negative result, that doesn't mean that there is nothing going on. It doesn't mean that you don't have a, that there are no risks involved. We do sometimes get inconclusive findings that we may not be able to interpret for you at the time that we get these results. There's also a concern for insurance discrimination, um, and sometimes we don't know what to do with a positive result. It's just not clear what this actually means and how it might impact you. A positive result may also surprise you and have nothing to do with what's going on in the family. Lastly, any time we do genetic testing, it is important to keep in mind the Genetic Information Non-Discrimination Act that protects individuals from discrimination regarding their genetic test results with medical insurance and employment. There are some exceptions that we always emphasize, including life insurance, long-term care insurance, disability insurance, as well as certain employers. It is important to keep these in mind when doing genetic testing, even in the prenatal arena, as there might be a surprise result that can impact. This would all be reviewed with you, with your genetic counselor. Thank you and have a wonderful day.